Hello everyone and welcome to Star Sector. We're obviously in a different system than we were in the last time when we ended the episode. Uh, if we go to the map really quick here, you can see I went from the uh, Xanthachi um, constellation down to Wello and just explored those thoroughly. There was not much there to be honest. And after that I just came back to the core systems because my inventory was full of guns and stuff, not metal, which was nice. Um, along the way I did survey a few systems kind of in just a little line straight back and to the core systems and along the way i found a couple really nice things so if we take a look at our inventory we have our integrated targeting unit mod spec which is really nice it's an excellent find we're going to learn that um, stabilized shields which is great for uh, high-tech ships and shield tanks and then armored weapon mounts, which is awesome for armored tanked ships because it increases the chance that their guns won't break when they get shot. We also found a high-tech blueprint package with an Apogee uh, cruiser in there, as well as a Shrike and a Wolf, which is great. And the Creme de la Creme was an Odyssey class battle cruiser blueprint, which is excellent. So those will be a real boon once we start making our own fleets. We also have a few survey data as well as two blueprints, which I already know. So we're just going to drop those off at Mirath here. There we go. We'll buy ourselves a little more fuel. And the reason for that is because I've given some thought uh, what I want to do next with the, uh, the series. And I think what we're going to do is make it our goal to have a, a system of colonized worlds that are both profitable and do not need babysitting, meaning we don't have to come back for them every single time someone decides to invade the system and instead can focus on more exploration and just doing whatever we want. So that may not be the end of the series, but it's the current goal. So without further ado, I'm going to head out here to Delta Guaya, who is a neutron star. And, uh, I'll just begin exploring. If I don't come across any combat or anything worth or talking about of interest, uh, we'll just keep going. Right, so we find ourselves in Delta Guaya. It's a neutron star. In case you guys haven't seen one of these things before, they emit two big beams out of each, or one big beam out of each pole of the star that rotates around the system, and it is pretty devastating to your CR to be caught in one of these. It'll just blast you to the edge of the sector or the system too. So you really don't want to be caught in one of these. Um, they also tend to have research stations around them. They're quite valuable. You want to check out neutron stars. Just be careful when you come in here. It can be uh, quite hazardous to your health. A little trick for navigating these places is to use emergency burn. If you need to get to the other side of the neutron beam, don't try and go through the beam. Instead, turn on emergency burn and cut straight across the star. Uh, it'll allow you to pass through with minimum CR damage and uh, you'll do quite well. Anyway, let's see what this domain error probe has for us Ooh, before the beam gets there. Ooh, we have ourselves a pretty serious defense force. That's pretty good. All right. Oh, also, you may notice we have a couple new ships. We have uh, the Fogel Clue, which is a Tachyon Lanced um, Sunder. Sunders are great um, support destroyers. I usually prefer to run them with a high intensity laser, but I didn't have one. I did have a, uh, a Tachyon Lance that I'd found while out salvaging, so I just stuck that on there. Um, these things are pretty delicate, though. You want to run them with support. Uh, we also have ourselves the Firefly, which I purchased, I believe, and the Raging Spider, our first carrier. I don't think I'll be deploying that in this fight, but it is there to provide fighter support. Essentially, this is here to counter other fleets with, with a lot of heavy fighters. Um, without fighter support yourself, these uh, safety override ships just don't have the point defense capacity to really stop a, a large um, a fighter fleet. So we really want to, uh, to have something to counter that, and this thing is built for that. All right, let's begin. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about 
was how command points work. In my previous videos, I've mentioned that some commands do and don't use uh, command points. I am incorrect about that. Command points are actually really simple. The way they work is that you give an order and it opens the command frequency. Opening the command frequency is what consumes the uh, command points, not issuing the orders. If we issue another order, you'll see it consumed no command points. Now, command frequency decays over time. Uh, it only is open for a few seconds. If I unpause the game, you'll see that it rapidly decreases. And if I close the command interface and reopen it, you can see that it's now gone, which means you want to issue orders in batches while paused, and you need to do it all while staying on the screen, not switching back and forth to maximize your command point usage. So there you go, just a quick tutorial on how the command points work. All right, let's get this uh, this fight finished. Oh, and another thing, I have changed the loadout of this ship. If we take a quick look at it, I now have assault chain guns in the main weapon batteries, and I want to have light machine guns in all four other batteries. I just didn't have them available at the time. So I will put them in there when I get the chance, but at the moment it just has two light auto cannons and two Vulcans. Um, having two chain guns and four machine guns is pretty much the meta right now for safety override hammerheads. It's an extremely powerful build and comes with, if you're sitting right here, something around, let's see, 2400 uh, base DPS before modifiers are taken into account from all the machine guns and chain guns. It, it's devastating. It's one of the most powerful um, front assaults in the game and sustained, sustained DPS, not burst. It's really powerful. So definitely a build you want to check out if you get the chance. And uh, you'll see that in action here. As soon as I get close to one of these guys, they're just basically going to melt. I was a little slow on the shields there, but that's okay. Goodbye. Now, honestly, these ships are so small that they're really not a good example. But when we get up here on these uh, these cruisers or destroyers, you're gonna see that a little bit better. Actually, let's deal with him in a moment. Take care of this guy first. Yeah, just look at that DPS. Oh, it just melts ships. Definitely the. Oh, wait, what are you doing? Oh, no. Okay, so this is a bug that happens in the current version. I don't know what causes it, but as you can see, he is unarmed. And because he's unarmed, that means he's going to be extremely shy about fighting us. In fact, I'm going to assign him to start chasing him down right now, and hopefully he can catch him, because if not, that's going to be a little CR-eating ship. His weapon is time, and he uses it against us very well since we are a safety override fleet that really doesn't have an excess of time. And we've got these little guys. These actually have no point defense, which makes them really, really easy to kill. It's kind of hilarious. Bye. Oh, we're going to overload. I don't know why I raised my shields there at the end, but it's okay because our overload's not too long. He didn't hit us very hard. And we'll just finish him off real quick. Is there anybody left other than the little dude? There's not. All right, um, I'm probably going to cut right here as we hunt this dude down because this is going to take forever. And I'll come back uh, after the battle. Alrighty, that didn't take too long, fortunately. Um, one trick you can use to fight those little single uh, ships flying around if you're concerned or having a difficult time, um, send your frigates uh, back, like retreat your frigates, and just chase it with destroyers. A uh, single frigate is not enough to be considered a threat to your destroyer, and it will not lose combat readiness while uh, it's deployed. 
facing those ships, or that single ship. So you can just hunt him until his CR runs out, uh, which is a pain in the butt. However, it is at no cost to you other than time. So just something to keep in mind. Ooh, we got some uh, machine guns. That'd be nice to use. I won't do that right now, though, because that's kind of an expensive refit. Okay, let's, uh, let's grab this real quick before we move on. And we're slightly over fuel capacity. Let's see what else we got here. Adventure. Can't salvage it, or can't uh, take it with us, but that's okay. I don't particularly like ventures. And we got ourselves a Cerberus. Hmm, you know what? I'm going to take it with me. Compromised armor is not that bad. And we can use it as a freighter, which is what they are. I mean, yeah. We'll put a flat cannon on it too, that'll be fun. All right, we can't put expanded cargo holds on it because we're not in dock. So I think that'll just have to do. We can put an ITU on it, yay! Our first integrated targeting unit ship. We got a few levels up that I just haven't used. Um, hmm, I really like power grid modulation for just how powerful it is. Um, but it is unfortunately only for my ship, which is, is why I generally don't take it too early, if at all. I don't generally take uh, piloted ship only skills. That's a personal choice. I do not believe that these are bad skills by any means. And the entire combat tree is piloted ship only, and it just turns you into a monster of a pilot. So go ahead and take them. I just don't personally do it because I'm just not that good a pilot. So um, this would increase our sensor, sensor range, which would be nice. Uh, I think I'll go with this one, though, for the uh, hull and armor damage taken and repaired after combat ends, and the D mod deployment cost reduction is really nice. Having it apply to maintenance costs as well is just shiny, so we'll do that. And then... This is a really strong option. I do recommend you take Electronic Warfare, but I do not recommend you take it early. Um, it's something that gets better the larger your fleet and it's not really uh, excellent in the early game because you just don't have enough ships to make it significant. Hmm, we are going to want the colony management ones since we're going to be doing colony stuff, especially this one. But let's see. Actually, this, this is the most important colony skill right here due to level three, it's uh, the plus two stability. That is really just unbelievably excellent. And for that reason, I'm not, I'm not going for that skill right now, but we need to unlock the leadership tree. So I'm gonna start doing that. All right, onward. I think I'm just going to, well, probably, oh, we can't transfer just jump yet. Okay, there we go. The Cerberus needed a little more CR, I think. All right, onward to the next system. accepted missions real quick you can see we're looking for a technology cache in the Lilith star system which is where we are and it appears we have found it let's take a look inside real quick 
or not. Hmm, I don't think I'm ready to fight a uh, triple brilliance, all rocking hyper velocity um, cannons, whatever they're called. Uh, have hyper velocity drivers, HVDs. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Nope, we're going to leave that alone and just remember that it's here. Okay, onward to the next system. <laughs> found ourselves a pirate base. Well, we're going to dock really quick, see if they have anything good for sale. Doesn't look like it, but while we're here, I can refit my ship with my machine guns I found. Let's see, do they have machine guns for sale? No, just single machine guns. I don't want that. And then I would like to switch out that for an assault chain gun. And I think I will keep, actually I will put those to kinetic damage. And then we could put an auto pulse on there. But I think the tachyon lance is fine. And then here I want to stick expanded cargo holds. That's five. There we go. Okay. Now we're online and ready to go. Nobody in the bar and oh they have one officer. Aggressive level two. I will hire her. Oh by the way we also picked up an officer who we found in a um a cryo sleep pod. So that's excellent. She's quite good. Uh good skill set. Steady but quite good so that's where that officer came from, and we finally got to stick her in a carrier, which is nice. All right, uh, consider our military options. Oh, they are close enough to fight us. Hmm. I'm going to try it. I think we can handle this. We will commit a fair number of ships, though, including our shepherds. We want to have escorts on the Heron and on the Sunder. All right. And the reason I'm willing to engage this station is it is fairly weak. Uh, should I have the escort beyond me? I think I will. Let my broadswords hopefully clean up their broadswords. There we go. This is a pretty weak um, station. By the way, it's the lowest level and it's sporting a fighter bay rather than a, um, a combat, like a, a gunnery deck. So with a little luck, we should be able to tear that thing up pretty quickly. Clean up their frigates real quick. Oh, I got flamed out. That's not good. Hey, yeah, fly in front of me. Please do that. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, there we go. Thank you. Ouch, I turned off my shield just a half a second too soon there. take care of this Shrike really quick before he can mess us up. Oh, it hit. I thought it would be caught by the shield. Oh, well. Put an engage order on that. 
to shred this shrike really quick. They're not too strong as long as you can catch them out like that. They're great ships, don't get me wrong, I love the Shrike, it's an excellent vessel, but it does not fare well when pressured like that. It is definitely in a strike craft. Although granted, nothing fares well when pressured that hard by a uh, SO hammerhead, but in that case it's particularly noticeable. And we did it. Cool. We did not lose anybody. Is he worth picking up? Nah. A lot of people like to use these as Reaper delivery systems. They're really, really cheap. If you look here, the recovery cost is one. <laughs> so you basically just use them to deliver Reapers to your enemy because they can mount two of them. I don't like them because they still cost fuel to move around. So, But a lot of people really do enjoy using them and uh, more power to them. All right, got a lot of experience. Very excellent, so we'll salvage that real quick. Ooh, makeshift shield generator. Nice. Don't mind if I do. I think we'll actually salvage that again. Yeah, that was worth it, okay. And uh, with this system completely surveyed, I guess we'll head out. or organics, even volatiles. This is this is a good candidate. We haven't looked at the rest of the system yet, but only 150%. I would like it lower, but Water Worlds do add hazard rating, and it has inimical biosphere, which is not great. Or inimical. Let's explore the ruins really quickly. Ooh, hardened shields. Ah, the other part you need to go with uh, the stabilized shields mod spec and front shield conversion another ludic path blueprint and an alpha core oh that is really good this was an excellent pickup uh, we cannot take all those organics which is unfortunate but not much we can do about it organics are essentially the same as metal there's kind of a filler i'm not going to worry about them and there's a very low chance either of these will make it all the way back to the core but hey, you know you never know Confirm and continue. Let's go see what the rest of the system holds. It's got a few planets here. Desert, arid, water. Ooh. This is promising. Because more than one world that's habitable is important to me in choosing a place to uh, colonize. So we're going to survey this one too. Eh, moderate ore. Okay, that's not terrible. Actually, what was the hazard rating on that? 125, okay, okay, this is good. A, one, a 125 and a 150 is something we can work with. What is that? A probe, you know what? We're not gonna worry about that right now. We've got more important things to do. We're looking at colonizing stuff. Oh, <laughs> we've got farmland. Okay guys, uh, we may have found our home. I don't know what this last planet's going to be like, but let's take a look. Abundant organics. And another 150. All right, let's take a look at this in the info. 125, 75, 150, 150. This is a colonizable system. We also have access to volatiles, organics, or rare ore even some ruins and some farmland. Uh, I would have liked better farmland. Um, abundant would be great, but you know what? This system, this could be it. This could be home. Uh, I'm going to spend a little longer off camera looking around, but 
in the next video, we should have ourselves a place ready to colonize. Uh, whether or not we'll be ready for colonization is another thing, but we'll certainly have at least a place picked out. So uh, at the beginning of that next episode, I guess, we'll go over what you want to have before you begin colonizing beyond having picked out a, a system. Anyway, uh, if you guys like what you've seen, leave a like. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.